Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the shed. It's Lonnie, and have a few eBay orders to pull, but I gotta be honest, it was a slow sales day yesterday. Um, actually, it might have been a little better than this because I pulled some orders that came in later, or actually earlier yesterday, but still, it wasn't a fantastic sales day yesterday. Uh, I got a couple of video games to pull on the main store, so let's go get those done. Two games to pull. I've got a Smackdown Shut Your Mouth. Shut Your Mouth. <laughs> kind of rude. For PS2. Shut Your Mouth. Okay, this was $10.99, I believe. And then right above that, this Arena Football. For Xbox, this sold for $8.99. So those are the only two sales I have going out for main account. And I need to check my other two accounts real quick. Yeah, wow, I looked at the other two accounts, nothing going out there. So two things, $10.99 and $8.99 going out, which is actually, I mean, I like making like huge monster sales every day, but today is not a bad day for me to have that happen because I have a ton of good inventory to list still. So um, yeah, I'm gonna have time to do that now, which I feel pretty good about. So I'm gonna get these packed and I could actually just put those in the mailbox if I want, put the flag up. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, and then I'll be able to start listing the signed, um, all the signed sports memorabilia. So. Let me get on that. Well, good morning, everyone. It's Lonnie. We are back in the shed, and uh, it's another day, and another few orders to pull. <laughs> Just a couple again. Um, I do have a game going out, Playboy, The Mansion, which I think I've sold this game before. Um, this is Playboy, The Mansion for original Xbox. It's an awesome condition, just like the rest of those games were that I got. Um, I have been working through the sports photos um, of listed the ones that are in this stack. I still have to list today the ones that are in this stack. So um, yeah, that's going pretty well. I've listed like I've listed like a thousand dollars worth of this sports stuff now. Um, just yesterday I listed yesterday I listed eh, about nine hundred dollars worth of stuff. So that was pretty pretty strong listing day. Just the stuff in this little stack right here. Um, but anyway, sold Playboy the Mansion for twelve ninety nine plus shipping. That is actually going out to a viewer named Tommy. I hope you enjoy. Uh, yeah, hope you enjoy it. I don't know. I think it's actually like a. I actually I actually tested this game before, and it's not like. There's no nudity or anything like that, I don't believe. I think you like throw parties and I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, hope you enjoy. A couple years ago, I bought a bunch of beer cans at a garage sale. I think about 60 beer cans for 30 bucks, some, somewhere in there. And I sold a couple of them. I list, actually listed them. Um, this, is back when, whoa, this is back when I was listing stuff like individual items every time pretty much back before i was lotting stuff up i would not list these individually today but anyways i sold this oktoberfest and this bergheim beer i sold these two cans for 4.99 a piece so that's about a ten dollar sale plus shipping on top the last thing i have going out today is actually this uh the last thing i listed yesterday which was this joe mauer um autograph 16 by 20 photo really nice i mean it's a nice photo colors pop i mean it is just a great photo and it's got all the little uh it's got all the holograms and stuff down here and what i did for this one i was able i can't do it on all of them but i was able to pull the number off of one of these holograms i think the major league baseball hologram and i printed out the uh, COA information. It has like Joe Bauer signing, Ironclad Authentics, March 24, 2010, autographer Joe Maurer, additional information, 16 by 20 photo. 
This came from the Major League Baseball website. So I was able to, to pull that information. So, yep, this sold for $99.99 plus shipping on top. This is going out to, let me look at it. It's going out to Travis. Travis said he's a big Minnesota Twins fan. So, uh, Travis, thank you very much for the business. I hope you love the photo. I am going to roll it. It's going to be rolled and shipped in a tube, this tube right here. And I'll pr what I'll do is I'll roll it, and then I'm going to put, like, paper on the outside of it and then slide it in that tube. So, thanks again. This one actually sold, too, for $90, but I haven't gotten paid yet. So, that's Ray Allen from the Celtics. Okay, I'm actually doing a uh, look up on this one. I'm listing this David Ortiz um, photo now, and there's a there's two different um, two different numbers here. So I'm gonna try both of them. I think I need five digits. I think I need this one. BB eight seven seven three eight seven. Let me try that one first. BB 877 387 and hopefully I'm not a robot no not hopefully I'm, I am not a robot but let me authenticate this let me see come on Jed Lowry signing Steiner Sports February 28 2008 autographer David Ortiz 16 by 20 so uh, and there's a button where you can make a print so I'm gonna print I'm gonna send that over to Epson print we'll go pull that off the printer and then and I'm gonna tell them hey I printed this um, I looked it up and I printed this online here's the paperwork <laughs> but uh, yeah that's what I did with that other photo there's no doubt in my mind these are all good. Those holograms all look good. There we go. Have a COA, sort of. I use a few things to do price research. I use WorthPoint. I use eBay, of course, solds and actives. And then there's another thing I just came across I wanted to share with y'all. I found this listing right here. Well, first of all, this is the photo I have here. This Sue Bird, uh, 16 by 20, WNBA player. And I found this listing right here that sold December 22nd for 16 by 20 autograph Sue Bird. It's got some type of, some type of authentication, just like mine does. Um, but it says it sold for $104.99. Um... It doesn't say it on this page, but you see there's a line through it. Best offer accepted. So I'm curious what the best offer accepted was. So I'm going to a site that I use a good bit called Flipper Tools. I usually use it for eBay, um, YouTube, eBay listing, HTML creator. I use it for that typically. But then they have this best offer actual selling price tool also where it can tell you what... What it's sold for actually so i'm just plugging in the um url to the listing and it should spit it out this was broken for a few months it wasn't working but it's supposedly working now so let's see what it comes back with okay it looks like somebody took 85 dollars for it um which is actually more than i that's actually more than i thought it would be so but that's a very handy tool because you never know somebody lists something for 100 sit on it for a year and then finally take 50 well you, that's good information so just wanted to share that with you guys okay still working on these photos and stuff and um i did want to mention this real quick this is pete most of y'all probably know him if you're watching this channel you're probably also a viewer of pete the craigslist hunter and pete has reached out to uh other youtube creators and asking for help he wants to do something very nice for a homeless guy that sold him some medals and he was 
watch the story on Pete's channel. I'm going to link, I'm going to put a couple links. I'm going to put a link to this video. Can we help Kevin? I'll also link the actual news story because the local news came in and did a story. Really cool, uh, really cool story. And then if you want to, you can look around Pete's channel. He has some behind the scenes uh, from when they were filming that story too, which is pretty cool. I think he's put out four or five videos about this about this whole situation but bottom line he tried to do something really nice for this guy and sold the medals and was going to give all the proceeds to him and uh it didn't get end up getting paid for so um he started up a gofundme and it's raised a pretty good bit of money already and if you can i'm about to donate now if you can give something if you have a little extra to give uh, consider giving to it because Pete is asking us to. And he likes to help people. He truly does. Like he's helped me uh, quite a few times during my YouTube career. When I had like 30 subs, Pete shouted my channel out during a live stream on somebody else's channel that uh, actually was on Golden Finger Pickers channel. If any of you guys know him, he hasn't made videos in a while. But Pete shouted my channel out there. He got me like 300 subs within. 24 hours or so which was awesome he basically helped me start my channel up with that with that shout out and then later on he helped me again when i was at 5,000 subs so um pete's just a generous giving guy he really is and he's asking us to give to kevin who came into his shop so i'm gonna do it simply because pete's asking me to do it but i and encourage you to go check out this story it's pretty cool and if you can give a little bit to the gofundme so i think it's a really cool thing that pete is trying to do here and uh, i hope y'all can support it too here is a question from robbie he says do you print your shipping labels yourself or do you take them to the post office to weigh and ship um, so if you take your items to the post office like pack them up and then just bring them to the post office and say, hey, I want to ship these. You're going to pay anywhere from 10% to 50% more for your postage. Some of the priority um, labels could cost you 50% more than if you print them yourself. Uh, there's a pretty significant discount for printing your own postage. And there's some other, there's some other variables too there. Uh, you can't like... If I print postage from home, I can print up to 16 ounces. Um, I can print up to 16 ounces first class package. You bring it to the counter, you can only print up to 13 ounces. So you need, like if you're bringing packages into the post office, I don't care what volume you're selling at, you are wasting money. You need to print your postage at home. You really do. No matter what kind of printer you have, whether it be inkjet, laser jet, or even a thermal printer. I use a thermal printer. I use a little Dymo 4XL. Uh, it's back, it's right there right now. I use that, but if you have something like, and this is an inkjet, this is actually a new printer I just got, e EcoTank. I've also got a laser in the house. But um, yeah, if you don't have a printer and you ship even a couple of packages a month, you'd you'd be well served go buy yourself a cheap 30 dollars printer at walmart if that's all you know if you can afford more get more i guess but yeah you gotta print your own postage you really do okay here's a good one from lynn um have you ever had someone pay with an e-check i recently sold something and ebay says payment done through paypal but not through ebay paypal rep said it could take four to five business days to clear uh yeah i have had e-checks before and I believe that eBay, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that eBay won't tell you item ready to ship until the payment actually clears. That's when it'll tell you to go ahead and ship it, but I'm not 100% on that. Uh, but yeah, don't ship until that thing clears. <laughs> I haven't had one lately. It seems like, uh, seems like I used to have that happen more often, but yeah, the only time I ship a package is when it's under eBay uh, waiting to ship. That's the only time. And if it's not there, then I find out why. Um, but typically there's something going on like 
like an e-check is waiting to clear or something is happening. Here's one from Marissa. Uh, have you ever ordered the game boxes from USPS? I have ordered them before. However, I don't order them anymore. Uh, the problem with those game boxes is that they actually ship at a large flat rate rate, which is pretty expensive. It's like over $17. Uh, you're almost always better off just using another box or Franken boxing something up. Um, and it'll just about always ship cheaper than that game box does the USPS provides. Here's a question from King Yim. Do you really make money off games or items $10 or less? With fees, is it really worth it? Uh, maybe, maybe not. How much is your time worth? Uh, how much did you spend on the item? Things like that. Uh, but for example, an $8, like let's say I sell a, a video game for $8 plus shipping. Let's say the shipping is three bucks. So total amount the customer is paying is 11 bucks, right? Um, and I know this may be off by a few pennies here or there, but uh, you're going to pay on just from the PayPal fee, you're going to pay 30 cents plus 2.9%, which works out to 62 cents. Then eBay, you're going to pay 10% final value fee, which is going to be $1.10. So just in fees, you're going to pay $1.72 on that $11 sale, plus you got to pay the postage, right? Um, so how much are you going to have left? You're going to have $1.72. Eight minus $1.72 is going to be, you know what? I won't even do that math because let's just say that uh, it doesn't cost as much, but the, the bubble mailer and, um, and, you know, the label and stuff, we'll call it, we'll call it 28 cents just to make the math easier. Uh, now you've got $6 net in your, in your hand, $6 net from that $8 sale. Um, is that worth it? I don't know. If you paid a dollar for the game, then you end up net free and clear $5 profit. Is that worth it? I I think so. You, I can list a lot of games in an hour. I'll tell you that. Uh, so, but that's what also why I say there needs to be a cutoff for when you stop listing games. Like um, mine, I've been using is like six dollars, and then anything less than that, I'll bundle them up. But you know, like if you're if you're like if your time is worth more money, then maybe you maybe you only sell like fifteen dollar games or twenty dollar games or $100 game, or whatever your number is. Uh, but yeah, you can make money selling $8 products. Question from Caleb, the reseller. Uh, do you ever worry when you combine shipping that they're going to claim they didn't get one of the items? No, I don't worry about that. I don't worry about much. Uh, it, if you really, like, if you start to worry about some, like, things that could possibly go wrong every step of the way uh, when you sell online then like if you really think about it and you say oh and you only focused on worst case possibilities then you would never ever resell online ever because every 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 sale you make could potentially go bad and you could potentially lose money your item whatever so i try not to worry too much i try to take reasonable precautions and you know usually worst case doesn't happen usually everything goes smooth i haven't had that particular problem go down though where i combine shipping and then they say they didn't get one of the things but if it did i'll handle it and maybe i'll maybe i'll win maybe i'll lose whatever and i'll move on to the next thing and hopefully it wasn't like the most expensive thing i sold that year all right freddie is asking lonnie do you, you do you bulk usps shipping practices i don't know exactly what that means or do you just drop off at post office so i'm assuming they're asking do i schedule pickup I used to schedule pickup. My uh, carriers started changing a lot. My carriers are not reliable, so I bring them to the post office myself every day. So I wish I could rely on the carriers because it'd be a lot easier and save me a lot of time. I recommend if you have good mail service at your location, schedule those pickups and get them, uh, get them to pick them up. It could save you a bunch of time if you have a secure pickup location. Here's a question from... Zhao, Joe, 
I don't know how to say that. Uh, how do you test TV remotes? Okay, so I actually grabbed a remote, put batteries in it, and this is one I have for sale. And I have my phone set up. Now, this is on iPhone. Y'all can't see me. This is on iPhone. So your phone, your your camera might be different depending if it has like a, a different filter or whatever. I know on iPhone, I typically have to use, on most models, I have to use the front facing camera. The one that, like the selfie camera. The, actually the camera that shoots out, uh, I guess that would be, would that be front face? I don't know. But anyway, the camera on the back of the phone, I can't use. Uh, the camera on the front, I can. I think it has like a filter or something like that. But anyway, let's turn lights out. Um, I use the iPhone. Hopefully, okay. Hopefully, y'all can, let me see if we can see that. Can you see? Yeah, you can. I think you can see it. That little, that little blinking light. Every time you hit a button, uh, you can see the blinking light. You could test all the buttons like that. So that's how I test it. may even work with this GoPro. Let me see if it works with the GoPro. Yeah, there you go. You can see it on the GoPro really, really good. So if you have a GoPro, you could do that. You could test each one of the buttons if you like. Happy Days ask, I'm new. Can you cut USPS boxes like that? Is it okay with USPS? Tricky question, uh, but I think by rule, you can i've i've done it for years like they're talking about taking two boxes and putting them together or resizing boxes or or whatever um you can and i do i've done it for years don't use flat rate boxes don't use regional boxes um some people even say those are okay but you can run into trouble with those they, they they'll just like you got to remember, like, even if you know the rules and something is within the rules, well, now real world, you have to deal with postal employees and some of them know the rules and some of them don't. So you want the path of least resistance. I would recommend not using flat rate or regional rate boxes to do your Franken boxing with um, because there's no reason to. The other boxes are free too. So yeah, you can use them like that. If I have heard of some people that try and present these packages, Frankenbox packages, to their post office, and they claim that they get refused, I would challenge them to show me why I can't, why I can't do that. Like, show me in your DMM why I can't present this package like this, please. Uh, and then, you know. It may be that you get so much resistance, you use a different post office, or you just stop resizing the boxes. You know, at some point you have to get the package out. <laughs> so real, you know, uh, theoretically, yes, you can. In real world, if you get resistance, you may not be able to. So, but I've been doing it for, I don't know, five years now, six years. I've been Frankenboxing these things and I've never had a problem once. Okay, I think that's going to be it for today. Um, thank y'all very much for watching. Don't forget, go check out Pete's videos, that link below, and that Patreon if you have a little extra to give. Uh, I would appreciate you checking those things out, and I will see y'all again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.